Hi, this is Rish Outfield. And Big Anglovich. And this is That Gets My Goat. Number 79. Really? 79? Uh, give or take. I'm not sure. We've lapped our regular podcast already. <laughs> No, this is just something we do. For me, it's fun. For Big, it's just like pulling teeth. But it's a, a little oh. com complaint session about whatever happens to be pissing us off today. And probably you have a lot to complain about right now because I'm making you do this even <laughs> though you want to go to bed. But I've been really focused on trying to get this out every single week. <clears throat> and so I'm making you do it. We've finished up summer. Summer is over. It's fall now. It's a, almost the Halloween season, which is my favorite season of the year. But, I, you know, I'm quite fond of summer, too. It's just residual effect of not being in school as a kid and looking forward to being able to play and go out and get in the bright sunshine. Uh -huh. But also, uh, that's the big movie season. That's when all oh, the studios right. put out their blockbuster movies, the movies that you've looked forward to all winter long. And they tend to come out in the late spring, early summer. And that season is over. And what gets my goat is what a weak movie season we had this summer. <laughs> Are you in agreement there? I think I could agree with that, yeah. I mean, I, I bet you could name on one hand all the movies you saw in the theater this summer. Yeah, I could. I usually don't see that many, so that doesn't really mean a lot. But I saw Toy Story 2, or 3, sorry. Uh, Iron Man 2. Strangely, I saw Night and Day. That was just the movie available when we went. Did I see anything else? I know oh, like Inception. That one was actually pretty darn good. I'd say, aside from Toy Story 3, which just gets a sympath, gets the nostalgic vote or something. I, I'm already kind of won over before I ever even went to that movie. That was, you know, gets my vote for that. But yeah, I think Inception was probably my favorite of the summer. Well, see, that's, that's interesting because I guess I, I just had a bad feeling when it was finally announced that Toy Story 3 was coming out. And we'd had such a fantastic movie in Up!, and then the next one is going to be Toy Story 3. I was like, uh-oh, this is the one that's not going to work. This is going to be the bad Pixar movie because, you know, they're going back to the well, but long, long, long time after. And uh, usually it's one of those, you know, desperate grabs at Right, it's like an Indiana 4 or something like that. Right. And so I was afraid. And, and you know, I, I didn't really like that trailer, the, the first trailer that uh, showed. But when have you ever liked a Pixar trailer? No, no. And that's a good point. It's a I've, good sign when you I've, don't like the trailer. I forget, that, or that whoever makes these trailers is not the same person who's making these movies. Right. But uh, I thought Toy Story 3 was just excellent, man. Uh -huh. Moving, powerful. It took things to a different level. They added pathos and, and, and stuff even beyond what Toy Story 2 had. I was just blown away by how great Toy Story 3 was. Uh -huh. And it was my movie of the summer. By far the best movie I saw this summer. But... The rest of the movies, not so much. It used to be, like when I was in college, that I would go to the, the store on Tuesday, every Tuesday, the release day, because there was a new CD and there was a new movie or something, a new book that I wanted to buy that Tuesday. And now, Toy Story 3 is the only movie that was released this summer that I absolutely have to own. Uh huh. I mean, they, they didn't even release any horror movies where I'm like, oh, instant classic, I got to see that again. I don't know what happened with this summer. And it wasn't that I'm old because I was only 10 months older than I was last year. And last year we had several movies to, that I enjoyed quite a bit. I even liked Wolverine, the movie that nobody liked. Was that last summer? Mm hmm Oh, wow. For um, some reason it feels like it was three years ago. I guess that's not possible, huh? Because the show's not even that old and we talked about Wolverine after going to see it last year. Huh. There would be trailer after trailer, and they all ended with in three. Uh, and every one of those movies, I'd be like, huh, uh, you know, that looks like something I've already seen. Or that's a remake of a TV show I never liked. Or, wow, really? Why? Why Why would you cast him in that role? Or, oh, geez, I am old. I don't know. It was all remakes or sequels this summer. It, it didn't appeal to me. I, I did end up enjoying a couple of those movies that I thought were not for me. But not enough to say I'm going to buy them. Like, right. it, like Clash of the Titans wasn't as crappy as I expected it to be. Prince of Persia was not as shit-drenched as it appeared to be. But neither of those movies do I need to own. And it's sad because I could see in both of those films potential. I could see where 
just a little bit more in depth of character or, or dialogue or focus on anything other than the special effects would have helped push this movie up another star or whatever you want to call it. I, right. I don't know. And, and so here we are in the October season and hopefully there'll be a, a horror movie here that I want to see. But then we're led into the, the holiday season and the only movie I can think of that I've just absolutely have to see opening night kind of thing is Harry Potter. Uh -huh. Is there anything else this, this winter that you're just like, Oh, Oh, that is on my calendar. That that's a I national haven't holiday. That's I heard of anything that I I feel that way about. Are you that way even about Harry Potter? I am that way about Harry Potter. I'm pretty excited about uh, about Harry Potter. Okay, well, and and that looks it's good. It's the big finale, you know. You kind of gotta ish. Although, yeah, ish. That's true because it's not really the. Uh, I mean, it's the first half of the big finale. But, but yeah, I, I don't know. I could see myself not being as excited as right because. Part six didn't blow me away like the last few ones have for some reason. And did that come out this summer? That came out last summer, right? Yeah, I think it was summer 2009. Okay. I don't know why uh, it was that it didn't grab me like other ones have for some reason. But yeah, I. But I'm still excited about part seven. Well, I am too. A and B. Ah, that's right. We got. You have to uh, clarify. Although. I don't think anybody will call them A and B in the future. Or maybe they will, but I think it's just easier to say seven and eight. Right. I'm sure somebody will say, oh, in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, I loved it when. And, and that's something that people complain about is the whole splitting thing. But I'm really looking forward to that. I think that you'll get the emotional satisfaction by splitting it into two. That you wouldn't get if you just had to go, 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 go. go, go. Right. We've got 14 See, hours of film that we got to fit into two and a half. That's kind of the way I felt from part six. I think it, it seemed like there was more to it that should have been there or something. I don't know. I, I agree. And, I, and I, I didn't hate part six, but it was disappointing. And it certainly wasn't emotionally satisfying like the book was. Right. The book, oh my gosh, it was just devastating how it ended. And you got... A whole chapter to mourn, which was absent from the film, and that sort of thing. Uh, hopefully they can avoid in these, these last two movies just by saying, okay, you know what? People love the owl. All right, let's give us seven minutes for the owl instead of two seconds. Right? No, I, and I don't know how long they're going to set aside for that. We'll see. But I am looking forward to that. And, and, and another movie that I was looking forward to was Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, no, there's no movie called that. Oh. Was Disney's Rapunzel oh, was right. supposed to be coming out this fall. That movie no longer exists. It's been replaced by a much more teen twin centric, male centric film called Tangled in 3D. See it in 3D. Hey, go see it in 3D. Fuck you. Sit, sit your ass down. and I want your extra two and a half dollars. Also available in 2D. Oh, okay. Well, then <laughs> maybe I'll actually see it. I don't know. They had me, and then they lost me. Uh huh. It was originally in development as a 2D. No, let me rephrase. It was originally in development as a standard... Hand-drawn. Hand-drawn traditional animated film, and then tossed out when those went away, and then resurrected later as a 3D CG... What? Tell me again? CG or... Computer animated film. But the, Don Hahn, I think, is directing it, who, who did Beauty and the Beast or uh, did The Little Mermaid or did Home on the Range. One of those three great films. And uh, they've tried to make it look a lot more traditionally animated rather than maybe the boxiness or the, the, the super realistic way that CG can be. And yeah, they had me. And then for some reason, one of the pencil pushers one of the eggheads. Bean counters. The bean counters said, well, this is a movie for girls. And those traditionally don't make as much money, as, you know, because you know, we don't want any girls to be buying our stuff. I mean, they got the Disney princess stuff and we don't even have to release those theatrically because girls are so stupid. We need to redo it so that it appeals to boys. And boys won't go see a movie called Rapunzel. And boys don't want a love story. And boys aren't going to buy action figures of the handsome prince that's courting Rapunzel. So suddenly they fired, they, they replaced, sorry, they replaced the voice actors. With Mandy Moore. With Mandy Moore and Chuck. And they changed the title to Tangled. 
and they put out one of the shittiest trailers <laughs> imaginable to get boys interested in the film. And they turned Rapunzel, or maybe this is always the case, but Rapunzel is Medusa now from the, the comic books. The, what are they, the Inhumans? The Inhuman Medusa. It, it just, yeah, her hair is not just long, it's alive. It's so amazing to see my influence on you, that you know who Medusa <laughs> is. and My introduction to Medusa was, what do they call that? The on wizard magazine where they have the uh, the twisted toy fair theater comic book <laughs> uh, i can't think of the the what, black bolt where black bolt gets married to medusa or whatever and uh <laughs> And, you know, he can't say anything because his voice is his power and it, like, blasts everything. So he doesn't say anything as all these weird things are happening through this Twisted Toy Fair theater. And then at the end, he they're, they're toasting or whatever. And they hold up the glass and Medusa holds up the glass with her hair. And he looks around and he sees that all her hair is above the table. And yet somehow... A different bit of hair is holding up the glass. And he goes, what the? And boom, everything blows up. And that's the end. But yeah, that was my introduction to Medusa, which I thought was very, very funny. That is awesome that you remember that. that <laughs> you crystallized it perfectly. Shoot, what was I going to say? I guess it doesn't matter. You're but talking I just, about Tangled. Oh, well, it, these movies, again, if they're good, become beloved. Wizard of Oz has a girl as a main character, and it is one of the most beloved films of all time. The Sound of Music has a female main character, one of the biggest hits ever. Up until Aladdin, these Disney films, they, they, they do what they could, but the big hits were the ones with female main characters. The, these, these huge, huge hits, uh, your Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, your, your Cinderella, your uh, Sleeping Beauty, uh -huh. your, your Little Mermaid, uh -huh. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Fox and the Hound. Fox and the Hound. These all were giant hit movies, all female-centric flicks. And suddenly, in 1995... <laughs> Pocahontas comes out and it doesn't do as well as Lion King or Aladdin. And it, I'm sure it's that same bean counter, that egghead that's still sitting over there said, uh, the, the, the reason that Pocahontas wasn't as financially solvent as, as, as the other two was because it had a female lead. And traditionally, these female – I, I remember when that happened. Entertainment Weekly ran that story. And I was like, what the crap are you talking about? Even then, we were living in an in today's dollars society. Where I knew that the reason this made more money than something else is because the last one was 14 years ago. Anyhow, I really wanted there to be a fun throwback type Rapunzel movie. Now, okay, Princess and the Frog didn't do all that well because it has princess in the title, obviously. <laughs> because it's girl-centric. I, I don't know. Sometimes when people complain about the sexism in Hollywood and, you know, and just how male centric it all is and teen male centric, I'm just like, oh, shut up and make me dinner. Wash the dishes while you're at it. <laughs> but in this case, they're totally right. It's just like, how insulting do you guys have to be? Can't girls have a, a movie franchise? Can't girls have stuff that's aimed at them? They make money. They go out for girls' night. They buy tickets just the same. I, I, female lead in Titanic, man. There you go. Biggest movie. Well, it was. Ooh, until 3D tickets supplanted that. Okay, uh, the next year's Pixar flick, besides Cars 2, woohoo, was this flick called The Bear and the Bow? Is that right? I think that's what it was called, yeah. The, the Bear and the Bow. And they've, they've changed the title to Brave. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the title, Brave. Dude, the, uh, nobody... Friggin' Sir Sean Connery could come up to me and say, Look, lad, Brave is a much better title than Bear and the Bow, and would you like some pushy galore? And I would have to disagree with him, dude. I'd I have now, to just say no. No, sir, no. Mr. Wait, Connery. what did you say about the... Or what galore? <laughs> a lot of vagina. And, and I, I will... Plenty O'Toole, named after your father, perhaps. And nobody can convince me that Brave is a better title. I mean, Brave is an Indian warrior. Brave 
is a, a word that describes somebody with courage. But, but, but bear in the bow at least describes something. Now, maybe this pencil pusher said, well, people will confuse it with brother bear, which Big Anklovich friggin' hated. And we love Big Anklovich's money. <laughs> okay, maybe that's true. But, you know, Monster House and House of a Thousand Corpses both have house in the title, and nobody's going to confuse it with Little House on the Prairie, okay? But they did confuse it with Kid and Play's House Party. That was a big problem. <laughs> That's what it was. Well, okay, I take back. If, if we had R08OT working on this part of the show, I would ask him to cut all that out because you've proven me wrong. <laughs> no, and, and, and so the third thing that I'm upset with Disney about is Newt. Affirmative. Newt was a Pixar film that was supposed to be coming out. Gary Rydstrom was the director. The story was that it, the Amazon rainforest has been completely screwed over and the natural habitat of this very rare Newt has been destroyed and there's only two of them left. But luckily, it's a male and a female. So these two Newts are put together and it turns out that the female absolutely detests the male. And it's like a romantic, a bickering romantic comedy. Joe Pia would have described it as the land before time meets. It happened one night and no one would know what he was talking about because he couldn't say there are two newts and they need to get together to continue the species. And she hates him. I've seen production art for this and I was so on board for this flick. It was like it's friggin' Wally over again and they canceled it. They've, They've killed this project, In replacing it of? with Monsters Incorporated 2. My mommy always said there were no monsters, no real ones, but there are. I'm not going to gnash my teeth and complain too much about that because Monsters Incorporated 1 is a fantastic movie. And if there's room for a sequel as good as Toy Story 3, yeah. then that's... Toy Story 2 and 3 were great sequels, that's, so... That's fine, uh, but I'm not sure. Now, you know, maybe... What's his name? Maybe John Lasseter saw what Rydstrom was putting together for Newt, and he said, well, it's just it's not good enough. I'm sorry. We're going to have to shelve it. But I, my spider sense tells me that it was this same tangled brave guy, <laughs> whoever this guy is. I, it might be Robert Iger for all I know. It's just, yeah, somebody said, no, you know, we can't sell Newt to action figures. People think they're salamanders or people think it's a <laughs> sequel to Princess and the Frog because they're both amphibians. Would be trouble. But I really felt like this romantic comedy by Pixar, I mean, it was going to be awesome. It, it looked like something that I would just eat up. And, and it felt like it was a little bit more adult. Not that uh, Up or Wally e or, or, or Toy Story 3 weren't adult. Uh -huh. But it just, yeah, it, but it's gone. It's over. It's done. I'm... I know financially the wise choice was to go for the proven commodity, to go for a sequel to a hit, a previous hit, something that already has merchandising, something that already has name recognition. But uh, that surely in 2011, when there are two Pixar's movies being released in a year, there's room for both. You would think so. I don't know. We've talked about it before, and I still worry about the uh, end of the golden age of Pixar animation, how much longer do we have left? It's interesting to realize, you know, a lot of people, they talk about golden ages, but they only start talking about them once it's over and gone. Right. Well, because you need a little bit of distance to see how much better it was then than it is now. But yeah, we know for a fact that we are in the golden age and who knows how much longer it can last, how much longer before it, Cars 2 and Monsters 2 and the sequel DreamWorks type mentality destroys everything that was good about Pixar and turns them into a crap factory, just like all the rest of the uh, computer animated filmmakers. I definitely worry about that. Hopefully it's not the case, but yeah, I have to agree. I'm sure that the reason they're making a Cars 2 is not because they have, oh, hey, we got this great story that we just have to tell. No, it's because... I mean, you still see it in the toy store now. Cars came out in 2006, I think. They still have Cars toys in the toy store. Maybe Walmart is saying, hey, you know, you guys haven't done a movie for Cars in a while, and we're, we're going to have to take these off the shelves. 
And so they said, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, we'll, we'll make another one. I don't know what it is that is the motivating factor behind this. And I think Monsters Incorporated, same thing. I'd be willing to bet that Monsters Incorporated probably sold the third most toys out of all their films. If you go down the line, um, it, I think it probably came right after uh, Toy Story. Well... I think Toy Story's got to be our winner. Toy Story's by cars. probably ahead of Cars. Yeah, you're probably right. But you know what? There's room for action figures and sequels out there. Incredibles, <laughs> Incredibles two, Incredibles three, Incredibles four. I, I, in what world do we live where we need a Monsters Inc. two before an Incredibles two? Yeah, definitely. That That's... doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, that felt like the beginning installment in a whole series of adventures of the incredible family of the, the pars par family. I mean, we had a perfect sequel set up at the very end too. And they haven't even done a short film with yeah, the underminer a short adventures or something. But, They've been doing cars tunes do the tall tales that Mater tells everybody. There's that, but no, they haven't uh, gone on with the incredibles. Yeah, and I, I would have no problem if they did short films with the Toy Story characters. Yeah, I totally agree um, with that. I, the Toy Story characters are so beloved at this point that it, it would take a serious misstep for me to go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm done with them. I hear you. They, they, they're real, three-dimensional, wonderful characters. That My nephew is two years old, and he loves them. I'm as old as the hills, and I love them. I don't know. And, and it's just that whole playing it safe Let's look at the bottom line above all mentality. And yet we had a summer where the most talked about movie, the movie that everybody you know freaked out about in that way was uh, Inception, which was dreamscape notwithstanding, totally original, totally unlike anything you've right. seen, uh, difficult to even explain, and certainly difficult to put in a this meets this <laughs> right. sort of uh, vocabulary. And uh, thankfully... That movie made a hell of a lot of money. And so hopefully every single studio head the next week said, what do we have? You know, that's something like that, 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 that that's unusual, that's interesting, that people we can say, you know, go see it because it's not going to be like anything else that's coming out this summer. You know, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there is probably right now saying, oh, Tron 2. <laughs> but there's a word in that sentence that just puts a hole in the whole argument. I don't know if next summer is going to be better. I, I hope it is. I'm willing. I, I still have enough hope left in the bucket or, or in, in Pandora's box to say, yes, I hope that next summer is better. You know, we've got some movies I'm looking forward to, but we've also got the Smurfs feature film. Oh. I pray to Shiva. Let me die. But I do not. So, you know, there's, there's, there's this thing. There's things to complain about. Hopefully there's a little bit of hope. I said hope twice in the same sentence. Good night, everybody. <laughs> All right. See you later. That Gives My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in Creative Commons doesn't mean anything. And it's like a romantic, a bickering romantic comedy. Joe Pia would describe it as, uh, what's that? It starts with a no. One night, one, once a night, only one night, on, one night. Oh, help me. <laughs> Cary Grant. Catherine oh, Hepburn. it happened one night. It happened one night meets the Robocock. No, what's a movie? <laughs> it happened one night meets... Land Before Time, I'll say it. I was going to say Fern Gully. Okay. okay.